Welcome back to Hot Takes and Deep Dives. This is Jess, and I'm super excited to be here with the Bravo Breakdown herself, Miss Sasha Morfa. How are you, Sasha? Hi, Jess. Thank you so much for having me on a beautiful Saturday afternoon after Thanksgiving, Feeling still feeling stuffed, still grazing on the leftovers, did a little shopping yesterday, and I am ready to chat. You, so you're in LA, right? Yes, I am. You're an actress. I am. Which is cool. And you're in, I know you had like little bit parts, not only in Scandal, which was actually one of my favorite shows, but also the Black Panther. Yes. Did you just like audition? Like how did, Oh my God. How, for, tell me like the story behind both of those. Okay. So, so Scandal was my first ever role that I ever booked, like my first ever speaking role. I booked that in 2015. And so that was that was just like one of those moments where it's like, oh, wait, because I watched Scandal as well. I love that show. So for that to have been my first role on a show that's a, led by a black woman and showrunner black woman. I mean, it was that was really iconic to be able to be a part of that. And then Black Panther, I did uh, to the audition in 2017. I had to do five auditions for why to say like just because it was. Wait, so, but, was, so how how but you had like a just a it was just like a bit part. Oh. Oh, yeah, it was one scene. It was supposed to be a longer scene, but you know how these things go, like they start cutting and then rewrites. Initially, it was like a longer scene with Lupita's character, Lupita Nyong'o. It was like kind of a longer back and forth, but it ended up getting cut down. But because the film, you know, films like that that are really high stakes and that they kind of keep a tight lid on it, they do a lot of rounds of auditions, even just for like the smallest of parts. So I did two auditions for the for the uh, director via self-tape. And then I met Ryan Coogler. I had to meet him. I did an audition with him. And then I had to do a presentation. They like presented me to the whole like production team of Black Panther. I had to like come in and just like stand there and they just like look at me. It was a lot. It oh was a God. very intense. And then once I booked the part, I had to do vocal coaching to get the African accent. Mm -hmm. And it was like a specific village that my character was from that was different from the other characters in the movie. So honestly, the accent coaching was so stressful because I only had a handful of lines, but I had to coach with her and do all of this. And uh, but it ended up being one of those experiences that like is just will ever be ingrained in my mind. Because number one, Chadwick Bosman was there. Lupita Nyong'o was there. Denai Gaera was there. Right. Every all these heavy hitters were there. Uh, Sterling K. Brown was there. It was amazing. And it was uh, the scene that I shot had a lot of stunt doubles in it. So there was like four or five Black Panthers on set that day. Oh my in addition God. to Chadwick That's Bosman. amazing. <laughs> what, so I got, I have to ask like his very shocking death mm -hmm. this year. Like what was your react? Like how did you find out? And like, what was your reaction? I, so I had noticed that he had been losing weight over the years, but I really didn't know why. I, I thought maybe he was doing for a role. Cause you know, actors do that. They lose in game weight for mm -hmm. these Oscars. I was like, oh, maybe he's prepping for a role. Maybe he'll finally win his Oscar. Cause he's definitely one of the most underrated actors like ever. He's so, he was so brilliant, Chadwick Boseman, my God. But so that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, maybe he's prepping for a role. And on set, I didn't notice anything. Like he didn't seem, he just seemed like a normal actor. And so then when I found out the news, I was shocked. Like I really was shocked. And then immediately dev it was like a gut, like a punch in the gut. I remember that day I was talking to a friend. I just happened to check my phone. You know how we do. Yeah. And then it was just all over. And I was, my heart just dropped and I couldn't believe <sighs> it. It was so devastating to find that out. And he was just, I I'm so grateful that I got to be a part of his, his last film. Well, not his last, because he has that film coming out with Viola Davis on Netflix. Yes, but, yes. The um, uh, Mo, but, Mo Rainey's Black Bottom, right? Yes, yeah. yes. So it was it was a privilege to be able to be a part of that. And while I was on set that day, I really could feel in the air that, oh, wow, this is going to be a movement. Like I kind of obviously I knew because it was a black superhero movie, but everyone on the set was like, how are you? This is Chad. This is Sasha. Like everyone was very precious about it. And everyone was so happy to be there and so happy to be doing what we were doing. You know, we, we just knew the weight of what we were a part of. Even me, like with this tiny role that I had. I could tell that, it, I mean, I had to go through five, six auditions for that one role. So it, the important the weight of getting to even be on that set. I actually, they, uh, they randomly asked, so the roles of the, uh, you know, the, all of his soldier women that were yeah. all bald, they just, de whenever I was first finding out about that audition, they didn't tell me what the movie was, who wrote it, anything. It was just like new movie. Like they, they, they keep these things really, really, really tight. Like they don't, t so they just, my agent just sent me an email like, hey, are you willing to shave your head for a role? And I was like, no, cause I had no idea. Yeah. And then it ended up being for that. 
And I was like, well, you should have told me it was the next Black Panther. It was going to need the Ryan Coogler film. I, well, I would have shaved my head. I thought you were going to have me shave my head for some like random one off on like CBS or something. Yeah. I was like, oh, no. So that was yeah, my like, only I'm not regret. doing that for like NCIS. Sorry. No, no, no way. <laughs> so that was my only regret that I did not agree to shave my head because then I could have been one of the warriors. But no, it was really oh, fun. Yeah. It was it was a two week shoot and it was great. But truly how like most people and mo how most people know you and you've really amassed this really dedicated, loyal following, you created this Instagram account called the Bravo Breakdown and it's shot so beautifully. Like basically it's really mm -hmm. just you in front of the camera and you edit it all together and what, after every episode of a new Housewives show, you basically you, like you literally like break it down and you give your two cents that you just like kind right. of give your take on it. Um, but what's different about yours from so many others, what, you know, a lot of them are in audio form. I love how yours is in video form exclusively and also just how professional it looks. Like you're always in front of the same sort of like purple screen. It just looks great and very oh, slick. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was one of those things that just sort of like came to me in the pandemic at the beginning of the pandemic because I was just, it, the acting was one of the first things to go. There was not, I mean, they shut down all production like right away. So I was immediately like, okay, well, what am I gonna be doing for the next, who knows how long? And you know, I've been watching Bravo like we all have for the past 10, how did you 15 get into, years. How did you get into that? Atlanta, house? Atlanta. And OG Nene will always be my fave. I know a lot of people don't like her now, but I just, if you go back and watch first season Atlanta, I mean, it's just TV gold. She's a queen, I love her so much. But so that was like kind of my lead into the housewives. And then, then I, and, you know, added one show after another after another now I watch everything mm -hmm. so everything on Bravo but that was kind of what it what the start was was like I was like okay what can I do and I you know a lot of my actor friends were like writing scripts and like doing little shorts and things like that and like I'm not a writer and I kind of was burnt out because I, I do auditions all the time so I'm constantly reading scripts I, I just I read scripts all the time sometimes I'll get an audition I won't even read the script if the character seems like really far-fetched like I'm not like for, like like euphoria I auditioned for euphoria mm. and it, it ended up the role I auditioned for was Zendaya's role and I didn't even oh. read the script right and that's what I'm saying it's like it was exciting to get that audition but I didn't even like read the script because I knew it was going to be an offer like I, I knew it was going to be offer in, as soon as I read the script so certain things like that it's like I, you can just tell like I'm not gonna sit here and like read a 50 page script and then I have another audition that's due tomorrow that I might maybe could even get that one. You know what I mean? So totally. I kind of have to pick and choose. Even the move, the new show, have you watched Flight Attendant, that new show on HBO? Oh, that, I can't believe you just mentioned, I literally watched the first episode last night. Okay, that's another, it's pretty good. I don't love it, but it's, you know, it's, it's, Wait, a, it's you a know what the guy, um, Luke. Luke from Summer House. Yes, is from in, Summer House. He's in the first episode. He is, I saw that, <laughs> I saw that. I know, I was like, okay, Luke. But so I auditioned for a Shoshana Bean's role in that show. Oh my God. So that's the kind of thing where you like, you get your hopes up, mm -hmm. you learn the lines, and then it ends up going to a name actor that more than likely didn't audition for it. So that's kind of the thing with auditions. Like I kind of have to read it, see who's attached to it, see who the director is, see, see what offers are out. And the, op the offers are out to A-listers. I'm not gonna, you know, some totally. actors will say, oh, you're missing out on, you know, why would you, you know, phone it in? But when you do it for a year, I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years, so I can kind of gauge. So anyway, so that was kind of where I was at the beginning of pandemic, constantly reading scripts. And I wanted to do something that didn't feel like that, if that makes sense. Like I, art is like acting is my art and it's, but it's also work. But the Bravo thing just, it was always just like escapism. And it was just, it was always so easy to love Bravo and talk about Bravo. And I didn't have any friends that love Bravo as much as I did. Like I would talk something so specific from, you know, a specific scene and they don't know what I'm talking about. And I thought I was the only one in the world because when I when I started my page, I had never listened to a podcast, didn't know oh. any meme accounts, didn't follow any. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I had no idea because a lot of these meme accounts are only like two years old, like yeah. that these accounts have sort of pop up. The podcasts have been around a little bit longer, but like the meme sort of Instagram thick fandom community is a little bit newer. And I thought it was so, I, I felt so connected to these people because they would make a meme about one specific moment that I thought was hilarious that I thought no one else noticed. Yeah. So that was like, I was like, okay, so other people are doing this and maybe what I have to say would be somewhat interesting to someone. So that was kind of when I got the idea to do the videos and, you know, I was like, should I do a podcast? Should I do videos? No, okay, it was very smart for you to do the videos. 
I think so. Mm -hmm. And and it was it was an easier transition for me than a podcast would have been simply because you're an actress. I'm, I'm an actor. Yeah. And be, with most acting auditions being self tapes, I'm really have gotten really good at self correcting and mm -hmm. self directing myself and self producing really. This makes complete sense. Why I was like, how is this so damn slick? Y you literally just answered like every question yeah. I had about I'm like, she's so professional. Like how? <laughs> like this is not, like, this is not some like 25 year old in their basement. Like no. how is she doing <laughs> Yeah, so, like all those yeah. years of rejection have trained me they to know off. how they to, to self-correct. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Because I'll say a line. You know, when you're on set, you say a line, the director comes up to you, they give you the note once, they go back to the video village. And if you don't fix your note, that's money. Because then they have to leave the video village, come back over to you again, tell you the note again. Like it's really, I've gotten really good at like seeing the one thing that's wrong, fixing it right away. And now I've gotten to the point to where like, I'll be recording something I can hear in my tonation, like that is not gonna land properly. And I can just correct it really quickly and like keep it moving. So yeah. it's, yeah. So that's kind of the video thing. And then I was like, okay, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do something creative, I may as well make it on camera and mm -hmm. sort of continue that sort of trajectory. Listen, you never know where it may lead. Like, honestly, yeah. somebody could come across, a, a, you, listen, you don't know who's watching those videos. Yeah, it might be totally. the right person and then yeah. you get an email and you never know. Mm -hmm. But um, so I I got in touch with Sasha because I wanted to take a break from, you know, I've been doing a lot of interviews that have all been uh, really exciting, but I wanted to have just like a down and dirty conversation where we sort of just take a moment and take like find out where we're at, how we're feeling about Salt Lake City, definitely Potomac, and also separately, I when I knew that we were going to be recording this today, so you guys all know that I'm a huge music, music fan, and two of my favorite artists released albums, well, first of all, Miley Cyrus's album came out uh, Black Friday, so it's freshly mm -hmm. out and our obviously ariana grande's album has been out maybe like three weeks now ish yeah. three four weeks so we are both fully prepped so we'll do housewives first and then i i would love to talk to you about the new ariana album as well as miley before we do salt lake city and i really want to like get into each of the women and sort of like where we're landing with them what are you the most excited for that's kind of coming down the pike like we know atlanta is starting in like maybe next week and also Jersey will probably be starting mm -hmm. in early probably early February I, I, yeah. would, I would guess and also by the way Summer House Summer House is coming back in January really yeah oh wow interesting yeah. that's gonna be interesting watching that in the winter it always airs in the winter oh does it yeah I thought it aired like like spring because we were watching it. No, you during... know it ends in the spring. Oh, I see what you're yeah. saying. Okay, gotcha. So by the time they wrap up, it's like early spring. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. So what are you looking forward to? With So you got it. Is Atlanta um, still your favorite? It. I go back and forth between Atlanta and Roni. It's a tight oh. tie between Atlanta and Roni. And they. I love them for, they're so different. They couldn't be more different of franchises, but I love them both. So I'm really looking forward to Atlanta. I'm really looking forward to seeing Portia storyline. I'm not looking forward to seeing the cast without Nene, but I know it had to happen. But Nene is just such a star to me. Like I just, she is Atlanta. So it's going to be interesting seeing the, how the cast, the chemistry and everything without her. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Jersey, you know, I'm not the biggest Jersey fan. And I know J people hype Jersey up a lot. I just, I remember when I first watched it, I was so, when I first saw Teresa speak in her confessional, I was like, oh, wait. Um, she doesn't know what she's most of the time, what she's saying or what the other person is saying. You could just see somebody will say something like an insult and she'll just go blank. Like she has no idea what they're even saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> yeah. okay, I don't understand. Like what is the big hype around this woman? But I get it. You know, I get Teresa, the table flipping. I'm not excited for Dallas. No, I've just, isn't never it been so in interesting how Bravo, Bravo just ignores the Real Housewives of Dallas. Da Dallas is so the redheaded stepchild that like mm -hmm. they keep locked away in the basement. I'm over it. Why do we need it? I like, have do we no. Need, oh, do we that need is the Dallas? first. That is the first one that I would cut. I am shocked that they filmed another season. Me because, too. Because here's the thing. I love Stephanie Hallman. I really do like yeah. her as a as mm -hmm. a as a character. She's she is a good housewife because she's different. However, as horrible as the things that Leanne said to the new Carrie, Carrie yeah. Brittingham. 
you cannot take away the fact that Leanne Locken, the entire show, revolved around Leanne. It did. And she was really one of the greatest housewives to ever do it. And I do not know how the show, they should have, I think, saved that money, maybe gave, given some of that money, perhaps to Real Housewives of New York, who can't even mm-hmm. like leave the state to go on vacation. Yeah. Like throw the money, like distribute it elsewhere or like reinvest in the existing shows. Like why bother? There's no way Dallas is going to continue on past no. this. No, no, no. I, I totally agree. They could lay that one to rest for sure. And Did no you one like Leanne? I appreciated her. I wasn't a huge fan of hers. Well, no, what she did last season. But I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, even besides that, like whenever she would like that one party where she got was, she would get these real, she would get so dramatic. Scary, yeah. Yeah, it was like a lot, you know? (laughs) That's why I loved her though. (laughs) I love that she like was a little scary. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, but then that's why I say it's like, there's some housewives who I would love to be on BFF and hang out like a Sonya Morgan. Like I wish she was my girlfriend. And then Leanne, I would never want to hang out with her ever, but I get it. Like, I appreciate her. She's crazy. She's out there. She does. She does the most. And like you said, great housewife. Yeah. So. All right. Let's do it. Salt Lake City. Where are you? Where are you at? So overall, I am loving Salt Lake City. I think it's refreshing. I'm loving seeing the Mormon culture. I loving getting a glimpse into this world that I never, I mean, I've, I watched every episode of Sister Wives. So that was kind of like mm-hmm. my reference of the Mormon culture. So it was nice to see it from an angle of more of the rebellious side, like these women that are kind of breaking free from it. So I find that intriguing um, overall. And I love the winter's background. We don't, we don't have any shows that are like that. I love it. I love that. It, it's so clean and fresh and yes. sexy. I love seeing the white, like the snow, the snow on screen is gorgeous. Beautiful. And the music. I, I, I don't notice the music as much on any other show as I do on this show. Like, huh, 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 huh. Like the because choir. They're, tr- they're integrating like gospel into it to yeah. play off of the Mormon and the church stuff with Mary. Yes. Yes. I love that. Um, so as far as the players. Yes. Who are, who, are your, who are your top three? Okay, so my top three are Meredith, Mary, and Whitney. Oh my god! Prob- okay, probably probably in that order. Meredith, Mary, Mary, and Whitney. Whitney, tell me why. So I went to the 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 happy hour thing that they did with the Bravo Le- the Bravo. Oh uh, yeah, Holics how was Q&A. how was yeah how was that? It was like an influencer thing where they yeah. were, they were rewarding certain. Bravo influencers by they could do like a zoom with the cast yes exactly and so that was very eye-opening because Meredith and uh like Meredith and Mary were just so like I don't feel that I get the sense that they have watched the housewives like the other ones have like uh Heather and Jen have watched the housewives they have studied it they're like self-professed like Bravo fans yes yeah and I appreciate that Meredith and Mary had no clay. Mary looks like she had never been on her computer before. Like she looked like she doesn't know how to use Zoom. Mary like, looks like she doesn't know what the internet is. She doesn't know what's happening. And I love that. I love that in the housewife because of what you're not, it's hard to find that in 2020 with the show have been on for as long as it has. So um, I, so I love Mary because she is just out of this world kooky. You never know what you're going to get from her. She's so, I mean, she married, I mean, the grandpa story, there's so many layers to Mary. I find her fascinating. Meredith, I love how regal she's like darling. And she like so unbothered and she's so stunning. And she's a type that uh, she reminds me of Vanderpump. Well, she'll just sort of like say something snarky and it'll go like right over your head. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, darling, you never heard of that before. Like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> Meredith Marks does not have a British accent. <laughs> she gives me those vibes you know because she's just so un- like when she showed up to uh jen's party and she was like oh of course i knew this party wasn't for me like she's just so unbothered you know i love her i love she's meredith great. i love meredith marks i think it's very refreshing also to have a jewish housewife like if yeah. you think back in the canon okay jill zarin bethany she is jewish like she grew up her father mm-hmm. is jewish I don't know how culturally Jewish she is. However, anybody who is like, I'm, I'm a Jewish woman. Anybody who's a Jewish woman from New York, you take one look at Bethany. Like you can just her. You and know Jill's the are, type. Listen, I can feel it in my bones. Like I see yeah. myself like it's me. Uh-huh. Like it's this is my family. Like I get yeah. I get you. Of course, there's Jules Weinstein 
from yeah. Gone Too Soon season seven, uh, season eight mm-hmm. rather. But she was she needed help though. She was great. She needed some help though. Like she was struggling, like putting the utensils in the in the food. <laughs> But aside from those, aside from that, but yes, aside from aside from those, who is yes. another Jewish housewife? I'm trying to I think. There re- has to be one, but I'm like, I can't find one off the top of my head. Oh, Aviva Drescher. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't um, know. And also, I don't know if she she's only Jewish through marriage. I don't know if she grew up Jewish. But so the go- Jews are New Yorkers. So there were none on like Beverly Hills or anything like that. No. Orange County. Uh-uh. Interesting. No. Huh. So I find it refreshing. Like, I, re- yes. I really like, her. and also I find her storyline with the husband, the mix yes. how you get the husband and you get the story with Brooks, the son. Yeah. That is a great, powerful, she's coming full, full throttle, full circle with personal mm-hmm. story. So I can see her going the distance, you know, for like a good three seasons. Totally. What are you thinking of Brooks? Because people are getting like, I'm getting a lot of mixed sort of reviews yeah. on Brooks. Okay, so in this last episode, so it's interesting. He had a decent amount of screen time in the first episode. He wasn't in an episode two. And then season, uh, I'm sorry, episode three, he's coming through with a confessional. I know. He's coming off as just a bitchy gay. He is. And the truth of the matter is he took the semester off of college because he was going to be on Housewives. Right. Very Not obvious. to work on his clothing line. Come on. Come on. So I like him, but I found it very annoying when he was t- talking to his mother like about her friends. That doesn't really happen. That's not- It's just like, dude, know your place. Go on somewhere. This is grown women talking. Go sit down somewhere. You're, he's doing, oh, I saw her vagina. No, you didn't. I don't know why in the hell Jen was saying grinder. Why, why yeah. the hell was she doing that? That was inappropriate. Why would you do that? I'm curious to see how his role expands throughout the season because I think they yeah. know what they have with him, the producers. Yeah, and I was totally. actually like pay, really paying attention to the the producer credits and it is full blown the New York producers like Lisa Shannon. Oh, okay. Like it's, it is fully those those individuals from Shed. So they have a great team on their hands like editing and producing this thing. I mean, what is it going to be at the reunion? I hope he's not because the thing about Brooks is he could be a fan favorite, but he needs to let it come to him. He's like forcing it. He's like, I'm here. I'm going to do my confessional confessional. Like he's trying to stir the pot. He doesn't, it's not necessary. All he, if he were to drop just a little one line, that would be enough for people to make memes and people to love him, but he's doing too much. Um. Okay. Wait, before we go on. Okay. You were talking about Mary. Mm-hmm. Have you done the, the Reddit deep dive? I have not done it personally, but I have read the other things that people are saying about the cult and all her plastic surgery and stuff. What do you think? I mean, I, I wouldn't put it past her. It sounds like something that she would do. Do you think Bravo knew that they were casting a cult leader as a housewife? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I mean, can you just like, imagine? Maybe. I mean, it feels, she feels so unhinged Mm -hmm. and I think she is going to be a one-hit wonder she's going to be a one-season wonder she's so reminds me of like the Brandy Glanville or maybe even a better comparison would be like a Danielle Staub she's going to wind up alienating yes Yes. everyone in the cast but that's sometimes that's a perfect thing and honestly, you know? all you need is all you need is one ally. And I feel that her and Meredith get along great. So if are, she they can still, somehow, are they still friends now? I don't know. I know that when I saw them all on Watch What Happens, she only seemed to really have a rift with uh, Jen. Mm-hmm. She seemed to be okay with everyone else. So I I suspect by the time the reunion, I think she's going to all eyes are going to be on her during the reunion. She's going to be confronted. About the cult and like the money and all of the accusations that are going on on Reddit. And it's going to be amazing. That's what I was going to say. I hope all of that happens. I hope she has a cult. I hope she actually didn't get, because, you know, they're saying she made up the whole older glance thing. Yes. And actually got a bunch of work done. I hope that is the truth. I hope everything that is said on Reddit is factual. Because I love it. That church scene was wild. Wild. Because I'm like, is she a pastor or is she a first lady? 
Because it's two different things. <laughs> well, she. Okay, th- this is like sort of a strange comparison. Are you familiar with Soul Cycle at all? Yeah. Okay. So, have you ever like gone in LA? Yeah, I have. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So there are a few. I don't know if you know this instructor, Angela. Like, she's like very highly revered. She in LA. She's no longer with Soul Cycle. She since like is doing her own thing. Okay. A is new- she a black? Is yeah. she black? Mm-hmm. I know her. Yeah, I think I feel like I may have taken her class because every, everyone's always saying that you have to take her class. She's like I'm people's like... pastors. Like okay, she, yeah. It's like a religious experience. I know exactly who you're talking about. You mm-hmm. go there and you, it's like church in the dark. Yes. Mm-hmm. When, that scene when Mary was, listen, I don't have like hardly any experience like going to a church and like witnessing something like that in real life, like other than seeing it on TV and in the movies. When Mary was walking down the the pews or whatever it was to get onto like the the little perch where she was giving Mm -hmm. her sermon, it so reminded me of Angela at Soul Cycle. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, like this is what they're trying to do at Soul Cycle. They really are trying to recreate like a church. The church experience. Yeah. And I grew up in the black church and that, that whole scene was exactly what it's like. There's like a parade. They come down the aisle, all of the church members, and they all file into the pulpit. It's, yeah, I mean, it's like a celebrity. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That It's so she, what it reminded. It, the, with I her was gold getting, microphone? Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, this is like a Christina Aguilera moment. <laughs> I, I was like, I kind of like, it's kind of badass. I love it. Um, I can't believe that, Whit- did you say Whitney? Mm-hmm. Explain, okay. explain, Okay, so please. this is why, this is why. Okay, so, and I don't really have any feelings about Lisa, by the way, neither do I. I'm, I'm just uh, <laughs> Lisa, Lisa Barlow and Jen Shaw. I need more time with them. Like I have yeah. no opinion. It's like they're not even there for me. Like they're yeah, not jumping not out. They're not jumping. Yeah. Out. But um, and Jen is trying so hard. Jen is really trying. She's so active on social media. She likes people's comments like she. Oh, well, I heard your I heard your girl Mary is a real uh, doing some real wild shit on social media. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, you can't tag her. She's like blocked off. Yeah. So what the fuck is she doing? Like, I, 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 I don't know. She's made it so like nobody can act. Nobody she can hide tag it. her. She, it's crazy. <laughs> Nothing. Like you can't like she, it's like she doesn't exist online. Like it's like very weird. Which is more yeah. proof that she doesn't understand the housewives. No, she doesn't. Which is why she's amazing. Yeah. Um, okay, Whitney. But, okay, Whitney. so Whitney, Whitney, Whitney. Okay, I appreciate Whitney. Number one, her voice is hella annoying. And when I met her in the Zoom, I thought it was a joke. Like when she was talking like that, I was like, this is legit her voice. Like it's it's hilarious. So, but I appreciate Whitney because I love the fact that she's bringing her dad in and the whole addiction story. I think that's really important. There's not a lot of storylines about that on Bravo. I mean, we have like Bethany's, fiance that died from an overdose mm-hmm. and then Ramona's ignorant ass comment saying that he wasn't smart. So I appreciate her bringing him on for that aspect. And I just think that Whitney beats to her own drum. Like she's like, I have a stripper pole. I might be a swinger. I might not. I got big old titties. I married this man. Yeah. I slept with him. We slept together. I cheated on my man. And he cheated on. I just think that she's like so uh, bold and I love that she's unapologetic for who she is like she's just like I'm here and I'm doing my thing like I used to be Mormon and now I'm not I love how she's completely disassociated from the church because I don't I don't understand these women that are like oh yeah Mormons don't like black people and Mormons don't like gays but I'm a proud Mormon like Mm -hmm. Heather I'm a proud Mormon but they don't like black people or gays so I'm just like so Mormons is racist like I'm just confused by that yeah so I like that Whitney's like I don't agree with what this church represents or any of the stipulations that it places on women in particular so I'm gonna dis like she hasn't gone to church in years so like I just appreciate that that she's not afraid to like separate herself from her culture and her upbringing and just like do her own thing so see I got the vibe that she was cast because of the father's storyline and it wasn't so much about her like they could have found a hundred other women who all left the church. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think it, I do think it was the, the father's storyline that made her stand out. And he's such like, an, he's so interesting to even look at. He's like, so I know there's a lot going on. Her voice is fucking annoying as hell. She reminds me like, like a Paris Hilton type or like one of those girls on like selling sunset, just like sort of like an anonymous mm-hmm. face and voice, just like ambiguous no just like a floating head like no personality yeah. like grounding it mm-hmm. so she's like a no for me 
my favorites. I can, and I can yeah. see all of those things. Mm -hmm. I, see, I, I can see all of those my things. My favorites, Heather. She's my favorite. <sighs> I don't like Heather. Why? I think she's fake and phony. What? I don't like how she was like, oh, I like black men. Like I'm a, like like she's just so like I like rap music and black men, but I'm a more man. Like oh, like I'm a rebel because I like black stuff. Like you know what I mean? Like I don't like that. And then on Watch What Happened, Andy was like, oh, so your granddad was a henchman? Like what is that? And she's like, oh, I just made that up. She just made that up. Right. Doesn't know where. And then they're like, oh, the thumbs up just lied lied in the scene, but telling the truth in the confessional. Like she has an idea of what she wants to be as a housewife because she's watched the show for so long and she's a big personality and I get why people like her. I don't know. I don't think she's going to bring it as much as people think she is. I find her to be so relatable. And like, I feel like she actually is the heart and soul of the show in the way, she is. in the way that like Robin Dixon for me is the heart and soul of Potomac. Yeah. To me, they, they give me, they each give me like that warm feeling. Like I feel, mm -hmm. you know what I'm trying to say? I feel safe with them. When yes. I'm watching them on screen, I feel safe. In the way that with Mary, I don't, I feel very scared and very unhinged. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> but she seems like really down to earth. Like, I really genuinely like, like Heather. And then next to Heather, Meredith Marks. Like, yeah, I, like Meredith for all the like, reasons I said before, I just yeah. love. The rest, I don't know a Jen Shaw from a whatever, Lisa Barlow. God bless. I understand she's the one with the te tequila company. I need more time. Like, I don't have any thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um... But the show is is quite good so far. I'm no, it is it. good. And I'm really looking forward to see how, because you know how these shows are. One episode you feel one way and the next you feel another. Like I could come on your pod in two weeks and be like, oh my God, I hate this person or I love this person that I didn't feel. How long, yeah, how long do you think it's going to take for the Bravo fan community to turn on Salt Lake City next year? Because they really want to love Salt Lake. It's going to take, it's going to have to be really bad for, I feel like, it's for the fans to turn because they really want to love it. Yeah. What do you think? I'm sure. I'm sure people will find. I'm sure people will find something. I'm sure people will find something to bitch about next year. Yeah. No, you're right. Because I feel like they're right now. They're so hungry for it. We're in a pandemic. They're like, yes, new content. And and I'm watching. I'm like, okay, y'all were hyping it up before it came on. So let's see if y'all can sustain all these memes mm -hmm. and all this shit that y'all love so much about these women. So I think, yeah, people, but from what I can tell on Instagram, they are like really loving Jen Shaw. They're like, oh my God, the Shaw squad. And I'm like, why? Mm. Like, what's so interesting about her? Besides yeah, the fact I... that she is Tongan and Hawaiian mm -hmm. and was Mormon for all these years, but didn't know they didn't like black people. Like how? But you're married to a black man. Yeah, that's weird. Like what? You are married to a black man for five years and he's... Muslim and you're Mormon, but you didn't know that your religion doesn't accept his race. Does not compute. Weird. All right. Jumping over to Potomac. Okay. Where do you, where does this season stack up for you against seasons three and four? So I think this season holds up to all of the other seasons. I think it's great. I think Potomac gets better every year. Mm -hmm. um, the more we get to learn about these ladies, the more that they reveal about their, I think it's great. I love Potomac. Um, the fight, I'm a bit over it. Like I'm completely, come on, Candace. I, like I'm, can I tell you, I've lost total interest in both Candace and Monique. Like I'm I, over it. I want this storyline to move past and we're gonna have to sit through a four-part re uh, Andy said that it's possibly gonna be four parts they're kind of the least interesting people on the show for me I, I I mean I like them but I'm really sick of it they dwelled on it was falling into that Beverly Hills okay yes okay the reason why they got saved from going full tilt into Beverly Hills territory in the sense that obsessing and dwelling on one plot point for like mm -hmm. episode after episode while also doing a group think mentality sort of casting out one person as the yeah. outcast the thing that saved it is because all of the other women like karen ashley they all have very interesting personal stories mm -hmm. and so the cast is just so much richer than beverly hills yes and they're more willing to like really show the underbelly of what's the truth of what's going on i mean thank god for ashley darby like i i know I, she she really is my favorite she's great I mean, she's she's and, up there with karen and she's an open book and i love like mm -hmm. it's like you were saying the drastic contrast between oh yeah we i slept with women i had a threesome 
And then we move right along in comparison to, like you said, with Beverly Hills or the whole season is about a threesome and Ashley's just so easily admits it. And like, it's not a big deal because it's not a big deal. Do you agree that Robin is the soul of the show? No, I think Karen is the soul of the show. I think Karen is the grand dame, the queen. She is delusional in the best way. She's kooky. She has that kookiness too, similar to Mary. Like she's very kooky and she comes up with crazy stuff. But she's the she has that uh, maternal sort mm-hmm. of instinct to her. I feel that whenever she gives the women advice, especially Candace, how she's given her the last scene where she, the last episode mm-hmm. when she sat her down, was telling her how, how proud she was and how she handled herself. I feel that it's very genuine. Like she genuinely has love for these girls that are like you know, especially not so much like a Giselle or a Robin, but definitely a Candace or even an Ashley at times. So, I, I mean, Karen to me is the star of that show, the heart of that show, the everything of that show. Like I this wouldn't is, love Potomac as much without Karen. I think this has definitely been her best season. She's great. Like it humanized her and it showed that she can still like party with them. Like that, the one where she was like doing the shots, like at the lake house, like it can, cause there is quite an age difference between, if you look at yes. Karen and Ashley Darby, like these people would not no. be friends in real life. But totally. she, but she totally like rose to the occasion and like got down and dirty and but is still has that sort of like you said like that motherly uh, yes. vibe and and she's just showing like the real vulnerable side with with Ray and like yes. the difficulties that they're having. Plus, she managed to keep all of her friends. She didn't alienate right anybody. She's a class that, like she said, she's a grace under fire. But I agree with you what you're saying about Robin. I would actually consider her more of like the people's voice because she's the one that is like, uh, what are you talking about? Like that scene whenever Ashley told them that she's going to uh, make the statement. Robin said exactly what the hell I was thinking. Like, OK, so are you going to tell them that you weren't there? Like, are you going to tell them that you were not involved at all? Like, I love that Robin is really saying what all of us are saying when it comes to this fight. And she's not afraid. Like, even in the first scene when Monique came and tried to sit all the women down, Robin was just like, um, that's a lie. That's a lie, you know? So yeah. I love her for that. And and then what you were saying, too, is like Robin has probably been the one from the beginning to be the most exposed with her situation with Juan and her money and everything. Like, she mm-hmm. never really tried to hide it from the beginning. So No, she's kind of like, oopsie. Like, it's mm-hmm. like it's strange the way she's like so blasé about it. <laughs> um. I really like Dr. Wendy. She's great. But She's people great. are starting to turn on her. They are starting to turn. I'm turning a little bit. I when she the, when she first came on the scene, I was obsessed. And now I'm just like, oh, she's cool. Just because, um, you know, she's new and then the whole doctor thing, like the whole degrees thing. And I I, I feel like, you know, she's really, really aligned herself with Candace. Like she's going to stick up for Candace no matter what. So that kind of casts a kind of a dark shadow on it. Because just be your own person. Like Candace can fight her own battles. So mm-hmm. I, whenever she kind of butts in and sticks up for Candace, I kind of wish she would just kind of be there. At the same, she fits in really well. At the same time, total breath of fresh. I definitely think she's going to be back. Oh like, yeah, I sure. think they will keep the cast. Well, what do you? What is your prediction as far as Candace and Monique for next season? You know, I don't know. I, I I definitely think that Candace is coming back. I don't know if Monique is coming back. I mean, if none of the women want to film with her. And if the reunion doesn't turn out to where they have made amends, I don't see how she can come back. Mm -hmm. Like, how can she come back if no one wants to work with her? That's what happened with Phaedra. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen Phaedra back, but no one would film with her. If Monique doesn't come back, I don't think it'll be a huge loss. I think they could replace her with a dynamic, gorgeous, another black woman. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, oh my God, Monique was just so earth shattered. Like if I lost Karen, I would be devastated. Yeah, well, she's a star. But Monique, I'm like, okay, like, you know, if it's her time, it's her time. And do you want Candace another season? Okay, so for me, Candace is like a Kenya. Oh. She's a great villain, and I love to hate her. Mm-hmm. So I think she's necessary I for that, that reason. Do I want to hang out with Candace? No. Do I find her annoying? Yes. Do I think her singing is horrible? And her singing to me is more annoying than a Luann or a Kim Zolciak because she can sing on pitch, but it's still really annoying. So I think I think that yeah. Candace is necessary because she's, you know, she's very polarizing and I love to hate her. Yeah, I like her. I like her more than I like Monique. I'm, I, hate, I know I'm so in the minority here. 
I want to tell you guys about my experience with Wine.com. If you're like me, I find wine or champagne really is the best housewarming or holiday gift because you can crack it open that night over dinner or you can save it for the next Housewives premiere, whatever. Did you know that Wine.com is just the simplest and easiest way to search for wine? You will not find a broader selection of wine online or in stores, period. You can search by red, white, sparkling champagne, rosé, you name it, or by region, and they deliver it right to your door. They even have this chat feature where you can chat with a wine expert right on the website if you need guidance on which wine you like best or if you have any questions. By the way, they also have an app which makes the whole deal even simpler. So if you prefer, just download the wine.com app from the App Store and either Apple or Android, and you can search and buy wine while you're sitting on the couch watching TV. If you want to try it out, just go to wine.com slash hot takes and get $50 off your first order. W-I-N-E dot com forward slash H-O-T-T-A-K-E-S. So it's wine.com slash hot takes and get $50 off your first order. All right, let's jump over to the new music. I'm di- oh, yeah. I'm dying for okay. your thoughts. Okay, let's do Ariana first because I good because Miley is like still so fresh. I want more people have probably listened to the Ariana Grande album. So this is Positions. It came out maybe like three four weeks ago. Overall, what did you think? Okay, so overall, I okay, so I I think that Ariana Grande has a wonderful voice. Her and Miley in very different ways. She she's like a baby Mariah. Like yeah, and I know that's such big shoes to feel to say that but like she is she has the vocal capabilities that mariah had when she was younger in my opinion so i was just like the opening song was horrible like the song shut up that was her opening song. so funny okay (laughs) and i was just like why would you open your album with that song that was my first thought but i loved a lot of her songs i really loved um (laughs) motive Uh uh-huh I thought motive was really fun. And I also really like like magic because I was like, oh my God, like that's a song that I would want to like drive down the street in LA with like my top down, just being like, yeah, I'm so accomplished. I'm so attractive. I attract everything because I'm attractive and I'm so magnetic and everything in my life just comes to me like magic. And I was like, oh my God, must be nice. I need to say that to myself every day. And then my hair. Okay, so the thing about my hair. Favorite song on the album. It is so good. And the whistle tones. To me, it has the best groove. It has the best lyrics. It's just like the best vibe. Like, I love it. The musicality of it, the way it's written. Fabulous song. It's really good. It's really, and it gets better as it goes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, some songs, they peak in the middle and then they kind of taper out. That one, as it goes on, I don't want it to end. I'm like, no, keep going. She's like, "Ah, ah, ah." I'm like, yeah. It it's reminded so me more of like her earlier stuff. Like a lot of people have said that this album felt lazy in comparison to mm-hmm. maybe like Dangerous Woman and Sweetener and Thank You Next. And it's, it, to me, it is definitely like more of the same. It, it's mm-hmm. very similar to like Thank You Next and Sweetener, mm-hmm. except it doesn't have those kind of tent pole songs that that those two albums had. Like those yes. albums felt more exciting because they had like break up with your girlfriend and of course thank you next and there were a bunch on sweetener like breathe in songs that were like huge Huge. songs this feels very much like like just like a cohesive album like no song really with the exception for me of my hair maybe love language and pov the album closer pov pov is a good one i love the back half of the album yeah um but I'm fine with it being like she can keep doing more of the same and it's fine uh yeah no I totally agree and it was it was and POV for me like it was a little bit anticlimactic because it was like it's the chorus starts off as like I wanna love you it she seems sounds like it's really be this, great on it it does but then it just was it then it just ends I'd love to see you from my okay. point of view yeah that was the I wish it had built more instead mm-hmm. of just like sort of ending with that sort of in the chorus but no I totally agree the whole album was just sort of like one overall vibe it was like here's a vibe if you want to just play the album and every song kind of runs into each other yeah but 
the only song that I really, the only one that I repeated was my hair. Mm -hmm. Every it, other same. one. Mm -hmm. And then motive would just was like, kind of like a, a fist pumper, you know, <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> and Miley, what did you think? I felt like this album was so Miley. It felt like this is who Miley sees herself as. This is the type of artist that it feels like she's been trying to get to mm -hmm. with all of her other albums. I, there were a lot of songs that I didn't like. And then there were oh. some that I really loved. Which like, were the so ones like, that you really loved? Okay, so, which is like a stark contrast from Ariana. Because Ariana, everything was like, okay. But this one, it was like, love it, hate it. Love it, hate it. Okay, so I loved Plastic Hearts, Angel Like You, Prisoner, and Midnight Sky. Literally, I have the same list as you. Are well, you serious? So, yeah. But Midnight Sky has been out for a while. Um, That's what I thought. That's why. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So yes, so that for one. me, literally my, my top three or yeah, my top three with the exception of Midnight Sky, which there's nothing on the album that reaches the heights of Midnight Sky. Like for no, me, that doesn't. is like a classic for the ages. It's so good. Plastic. Oh, and, ne and never be me. Never be me. It's yeah. produced by Mark Bronson, who did like a ton of Amy stuff. And you can totally hear with the echoing, the background, the producing. I love that. The ones that you listed, the title track, Plastic Hearts, mm -hmm. Angels Like You, Prisoner with, mm -hmm. du with Dua Lipa. Great video, by the way, if you haven't seen it. Love it. No, I love it. Um, of course, Midnight Sky. But then the other two that I really like, I loved the the song she did with Bill Billy Idol. Uh, oh, that was a good one, Night too. Crawling. Yeah, that one was good. And can I tell you, I really like that last track. It is the stupidest title, Golden G-String, which is like a reference re to Wrecking Ball, I think. But it's kind of an – I just wish it had a different title. It's yeah. an amazing song. And it had a different vibe from a lot of the other songs on the album, which I appreciated. Which ones did you hate? I'm just curious. Okay, so I did not like, okay, the, uh, again, the opening track, What the Fuck Do I Know? Oh, I, I hated, hated that I, song. Yeah, I don't like that song. Horrible. I did not like Give Me What I Want. I hate that melody. And then that song, High. I agree with you completely. I hate that. But, and I also... And I, I felt like I wanted to like this song, but um, and I appreciated the collab, but Bad Karma, I wasn't really feeling it. But oh, I yeah, appreciated with Joan, the with Joan Jett. Yeah, yeah, but I I liked the collab, but I just didn't love the song itself. I'm not a huge '80s rock vibe, like I don't. Mm -hmm. So I like the songs that like played on the '80s vibe, but gave me like that do a loop. And honestly, um, Ariana Grande's album, I didn't like any of her features. Like I didn't like Ty Dolla Sign. I didn't like The Weeknd. All of her features, they were they didn't add anything to the song. Whereas Miley's features were great; they elevated the song. Totally. They elevated the. I mean, Stevie Nicks. I mean, come on. Yeah. And I love her and Dua Lupa together. I feel like her. Uh, so Dua, whenever I hear her voice, I feel like you could play her voice and play a bunch of other people's voices, and I probably wouldn't be able to pick it out. Which is why I feel like they were such a good match because Miley has such a distinct raspy voice, and I felt like mm -hmm. they really complemented each other really well. Speaking of the weekend, did you mm -hmm. see the Grammy nominations? I did. W can we talk about the fact that the weekend was completely shut out and he has had the number one song of the year with Blinding Lights, like on streaming and everything? So, that aside, Chromatica, Gaga was not nominated for album of the year. Wild. What the Wild. fuck is going on with the Grammy? I don't, I don't get it. The story with The weekend is that apparently the board of the – I guess the board of the Grammys and the board of the Super Bowl came to him and they were like, here's the deal. You, can, you, have, a cho you have to make a choice. You can either headline the Super Bowl this year or you can perform at the Grammys and you'll be nominated for all the Grammys. And he picked the Super Bowl. Wow. It's because they air within – like the same week or two week period and they're on different networks. That's why he sent out that tweet that like the Grammys have to be trans, like it's not fair to his fans. Like they need to be transparent, wow, but to I shut the guy, that. how do you not nominate? Wow. I didn't know that was like something that they did, like making them choose. I had no idea. Yeah. And did you see Bieber's fucking statement? No. What was it? Oh, so Bieber's so pissed that he got nominated for best pop album instead of R&B because his album was a true R&B album. So you mean to tell me your album changes and, oh, I'm so lonely. That's R&B? <laughs> Come on. 
<laughs> this, He's the, mad. Bieber, who was like begging fan by person by person to like stream a song. Do you have your computer yes. with you? Can you play a song? Yummy, yummy. That's that's R and B. So Awful. he had the nerve to be offended that he got a pop nomination instead of uh, an R and B. It's just ridiculous. Like you do not. That is not an R and B album. That is a pop album with. You probably had people produce it to give you like that sound, but it's still a pop album. Don't you think 2020 was a really good year for music? Oh, I definitely do. Between like there's a lot chroma- of good music. Chromatica, Dua, mm-hmm. her album, um, these two, Miley, Ariana, The Weeknd, and I, I know everybody loves folklore. Like Taylor Swift just isn't my personal. She just isn't my personal journey, but like I yeah. appreciate that that album is good and all of that. It was just an amazing year for music. I mean, it's I a totally shame agree. that like they can't go out and like really perform it the way that they, I'm sure, yeah, hoped they to. Want but to. yeah, I, I'm I'm very happy with the music this year, and I'm actually really proud of Miley because she's she's Miley. You know, Miley has got a voice on her, and she's the type of singer where like she will blow the roof off. Like her voice is very powerful, mm-hmm. and I love to hear her like get to sing like that and belt and it's really gritty and it's got a lot of character she has my favorite voice of any of the pop queens because it's just so easy to listen to like Mm -hmm. it's just so nice whereas like i mean gaga has an incredible voice as well but miley's like really draws you in it's so good it's so good do you think people like know and realize how strong she is as a vocalist no only like if you know you know yeah she's under it people need to get hip to to uh miley because the girl can sing she doesn't I, fuck around. I love her her album, the previous album she came out with, uh, Younger Now. Uh-huh. That, like, country album-ish. Uh, I love that, too, the song the most. There's, like, really great songs on that album. But um, this was so much fun chatting it with was. you. This was great. Where, Thank you so much for So will you be, will you, or do you cover... Salt Lake City and Potomac, like all the episodes. I usually will sort of bounce back and forth. So I have a lot of my content on my Patreon. So I'll mm-hmm. usually let my patrons oh, like cool. vote between the two. And then I'll like, because some, some weeks uh, Salt Lake City might be slow. So then I'll just do Potomac. Got it. Or vice versa. Because I can start to feel if I'm like saying the same thing every episode because nothing's happening. And know? are you going to cover Summer House when it comes back? I hope to. Awesome. I can, You know, I listen to the followers. My, and, and you know how it is. My followers are so responsive and they give me so much feedback. So yeah. if they want to hear, if they want to hear what I have to say about Summer House and I'll break down Summer House. If they don't, then I won't. Yeah. So I can't I believe that that say. Luke is back. Oh, I can't fucking stand him. And you know, I didn't even dislike him as much until I started hearing him. I, I listened to him on a podcast uh-huh. and I didn't like him like even less. What was he, what was he saying? He was just like, about? he was just all like, oh, like. Oh, I didn't want to sleep with Hannah because of uh, my faith. Like, of God, I'm praying for God to send me the right person. Oh, Lord. Like, he's like, f- his faith. I'm like, <laughs> but you ate her out for two hours? But you're praying? Like, <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Like, he he was he was playing games with her. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that. Like, the hot dudes or whatever that, like, you know, can get whatever girl, but then he's, like, playing hard to get. And then he goes on these podcasts and act like, you know, because he acts like he was so devastated by his ex fiance. Mm-hmm. And then he's praying and for his new wife and all this stuff. I was just like, dude, just your own summer house. You really are an actor. So you should be glad that you even got this opportunity to be on screen and just go on there and just like fuck Hannah and like have sex with these girls and stop playing these stupid games. Like in, unless you're Amanda and Ka- Kyle, then you should not be eating somebody out for two hours and not having sex with them. <laughs> like what, what are you, what are we doing here? where Sasha where can everybody watch your vi- watch your video <laughs> where can everybody watch your videos and if they want to like j- jump on the patreon for more give all the details yes. for all that stuff. okay so I'm on uh Instagram at the Bravo breakdown um and then my patreon is patreon.com slash the Bravo breakdown uh my tier it's five dollars a month so that gets you one breakdown every single week um, and I do full breakdowns of the episodes and we kind of rotate through, we vote and see what we're feeling. And then on my Instagram page, um, I'll put like clips from that. So some hot takes, yeah. you get to see a little bit, but the full breakdown is on the Patreon. So love it. And we do that every single week, right on my it. couch, right on this couch that we're sitting on right now, <laughs> breaking it down. This was so great. Um, Gosh, when the new music comes out, we should totally like wait till a bunch come out and do a little review. This I love I love doing the music reviews. It's so fun. And I love that we have a similar list. 
Because I was like, okay, because Miley was so, I, ha- I had such stronger feelings of, from, about Miley than I did Ariana. Because mm-hmm. Ariana was like, oh, okay, whatever. But Miley, I was like, okay, I love this, hate this. So well, because the, the songs are just more diverse. They were so unique from each other. So it was, yeah. it's either it's easy to like check off like, okay, I love this. I love the skip, skip, love. Yes, yeah. yes. Guys, you can follow me, uh, JessXNYC. Follow the show account, Hot Takes Deep Dives. And we will see you soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Sasha. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.